on the real. On Girl Chat, Tamara's shocking confession. We I'm in not so much trouble, but it will be called sweet and juicy. <laughs> and don't change the channel. I'm talking to you. It's a workout while you watch the real. And my style solution is that. I want to make you look like the boss that's on vacation. Plus, it's our latest batch of kidpreneurs. That is ingenious. <laughs> <laughs> the real. in women's health that posed an interesting question I want to throw out to the table. The question is, the question? should you always tell your partner if you cheat? Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh dang. Dang. Well, dang. Dang. That's how you really feel. Now, it says, you know, do you think it depends on if you're married or if you're just dating? Maybe. It's confessing more about clearing your conscience than being honest with them. And that's a lot to consider. So, Tamar, you first. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, first, give an honor to God and all the saints in the building. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Look, <no. laughs> I, I don't agree with cheating, married, single. I just feel like if you want out, just tell that person. This right. is not something yes. about Yes! Yes! Me. Yes. You know, and that's just where I stand with. I really don't have much more to, you know, I'm saved now, you know, and so <laughs> I don't agree with it at all. Well, I, they, I think the question is, should you tell your partner if you cheated? Because um, I get what you're saying. If you don't want to be with somebody, get out. Yes. But should you tell them? So, like, I feel like if it's a one-night thing, like, say you go on vacation, and, um... Without <laughs> you, hey, Stella, you what happened you on your vacation? Yeah, you, 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 you done met a guy, and, you know, some one thing led to another. And, and you just slipped. And you just kind of slipped. Yeah. And, you know, I think in that case... You know, because I have friends that have done that. That's the reason why I say that. Okay. And I feel like if you're never going to see this person ever again, I don't think you should tell the mate, this is my opinion, because why tell him if it's just going to hurt him? If it's to clear your conscience, you shouldn't have did it in the first place. So right. You shouldn't hurt him. That's what I think. Yeah. Wait, okay. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I feel that if you have gotten yourself into a situation like that... Uh -huh. <laughs> if I'm honest, you probably don't want to be with that man anyway, because I think maybe... Hey, for women, mm. I think what it takes to get to that place of actually already cheating and you're in the act like, and it's all... Like, yes, you probably want to get caught else. anyway. You probably don't want to be with the Not other... With, always. With your man. Yeah, it's that And in that case, I say leave, but don't say nothing. Not always. See, I'm saying it's different situations. <laughs> so you would... You would... <laughs> So to answer the question, because right. I feel like we're not truly answering no, the question. I, I would just so to answer break the question, up with you. you're saying you wouldn't say anything. Yeah, I would just break you up would with just you leave. and leave. Correct. I that, feel that there I'm are some people that just tell to 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 get the guilt off their chest, hey, that's what and I'm then mean. the other person is left like, oh my gosh, you just rocked my world. Right. And then it's different if somebody actually you know, tells them, but it comes from a genuine and apologetic yes. place. Because to me. What's in the dark is gonna come out. Yeah, I don't want to find out from someone else. That's true. Don't if you cheated, if you don't find out, I'm not already. Yes, <laughs> I want you to tell me. And when don't you do me. tell me, only tell me if you truly know the consequences. <laughs> number one. <laughs> Two, if you truly are, you know, if if, if you're if you're sorry, yeah. like like tell me what you want the result yes. to be. Don't just tell me yes. to then get then it off you, the chest. Now I've got to deal with deal with the ramifications. You know what I mean? This goes with what you're saying, Tamara. Yes. I feel like if you want to work on your marriage and yes. you've made a mistake, you guys remember the movie right. Sex in the City when Steve told Miranda? Miranda. She oh, I thought that was amazing. But she left him, though. No, no, no she didn't. Did she went back. But they went no, back they, no, with a can, counselor. See, this is what I was, I was going to say. I was going to say. Counseling. Let her say it. Do you feel... <laughs> now, this is hypothetical, because I, I think differently, right? Okay. So do you feel 
Like, you should tell your spouse when you know they can't handle it. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, when you know, if you tell them, tell them this information, it's never gonna be the same. you can't get back to that place. Instead if of you like, want no, to, if you want to stay in that marriage, because if you want to no, leave I'm it, it no, jacks it up. No, then I'm you just saying, if you want to stay, you know your spouse can't, or your partner cannot handle but this information. Right. But you, you want to stay. But you want to stay. You want to make it work. And you want to work on your relationship. Oh. Let me tell you why you should. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> if you want to be with somebody, you should absolutely tell them, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you want to have an honest relationship, and you don't want it to be built on lies. I don't want to disagree. Wait, wait, wait. I get what you're but saying. But you can't be the person to decide if they can handle that or not. You have ah, to give you them. You know who you, you with. You kind of do. You, you know, know who do. you with. And if they're not going to be with you after that, then you have to accept that, too. It depends on the situation. It, it depends on the person. Would you all consider it cheating if you walked in on your man watching an adult movie? <laughs> oh, it is. Okay. Okay. I hear your feelings. So, wait, 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 wait guys. <laughs> Before you answer, you should know that a survey done by EllicitEncounters.com found that married men who watch adult films are <clears throat> less likely to cheat on their partners than those who do not. Facts, right? So I just want to know, hey, I just want to ask you, yeah. would you be mad at your man if you caught him watching <laughs> erotic entertainment without you? Okay, guys, you're going to think I'm weird. No, we're not. But I think you should be friends with whoever it is that you're going to be in a relationship with. And I would die laughing. Maybe it's just me. I would walk in and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and why, why are you doing that? That's what, what's going I would die laughing. And if I'm honest, I probably would be the one caught doing something like that. <laughs> so I understand. It would, and I'm always caught. I'll be in there watching. What are you watching that? Babe, you got to see this. This is so weird. You don't understand. This is so odd. Like, I think, like, if you could watch the Food Network to, you know, spice up Wait, your what? spaghetti. <laughs> Wait. Wait, you can watch, you know, adult networks to spice up your relationship. Yeah, I do. I do agree. Just my opinion. We've all heard of resting bee face, right? You guys have heard of this? Well, according to BuzzFeed, there's actually something called resting shade face. Ain't it? That's mm. right. I heard you, Tamar. Resting shade face refers to how well people can read your face and know when you are not to be tried. Oof. Now, Tamar, I heard you. You was like, mm-hmm, yes, yes, yes. Because I would think that because you're the expert of, you know, Shade or no shade, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> you'd be really good. So cute. You'd be really good at using your face to throw the shade. So do you do this? Uh, every day of all my day. life. Or every day, all day. You know, I mean, sometimes you just don't have to say something. Sometimes it's just this. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you feel? <laughs> I can always tell. Adrian, you next. That's pretty good. It's a dead stare. I just be lot into it, like, no. <laughs> no. But Jeannie, do you have a shade face? You don't shade nobody. Yes, she do. I don't, I don't. She I don't shade with it. her mouth, not her face. Let me see. <laughs> Look, see? <laughs> oh my oh, God. Wow. Well, she does have one. She I has got a little one, one yes. Tamara, okay. you and Adam, if we saw y'all. <laughs> you stuck on that and Jay. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Thanks, Tay. Well, what about you, Lion? You, I know you got one. You are the queen. Yes. Of shade. Why am I? The, no. Yes. You no, are. The, you I'm just look you the 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 Yes. <laughs> Lonnie, it's in the eyes. Lonnie's always in the eyes. It's so That's cute. That's shade face. Yes. She's an undercover shade. It's like. Mm. Sometimes Lonnie will give you so much shade, her eyelids will come down so low. I don't even know if she can still look throughout her. <laughs> no. So She's like this. I feel like I'm too honest for my own good in the sense of, like, my face. I don't know if it's because I'm a New Yorker. My face does not lie. Like, you will know exactly what I'm thinking at all times because of my face. <laughs> don't Did you feel you, <laughs> Do you remember when we had that guy hit the Quan? You remember yes, that? Yes, with yeah. that dance. The Quan, yes. that way. Yes, you sent yes. me the meme that was going around with my face. What yes. was it? What was there it? was a meme that went you around. See her face right there. <laughs> we were watching hit the Quan, and that's the face that she had. I what didn't were you understand thinking? the dance. I didn't understand, so I was just like, hit the Quan. <laughs> and that was how I felt about it. That face is the wow. worst. 
That went on and became memes to a bunch of things. Like, I know you lying, but you can continue. Or it was like, it was just a bunch of memes off of that Wait, page. you guys know what? We know each other so well what? that sometimes, because we're shooting all the time, but you don't realize that the cameras are always on. Yes. So in between breaks, we'll catch each other in our resting face. It's not really resting B or shade face, but it'll just be a resting face. Yeah. Like Tam will always call me out when I'm just thinking about the things I have to do, but I guess the face is bad. Cause she's always like, Jenny, you're doing it again. And my face is usually like, yes. The zone out oh, it's something. But the zone out. The zone yeah. of it, and everybody agree with me, would be that one over there. Yes. She oh, is the queen, queen of, of resting shade yes. face. Yes. Ladies, it happens to the best of us. Whether you're in a style slump, stressing over what to wear to an event, or needing a total wardrobe overhaul. Sometimes we all need a little help in the fashion department. It can be scary to step out of the style box, but have no fear, Jeannie Mai is here. It's time for My Style Solution. Okay, ladies, yay. What's the 411 on today's fashion dilemmas? 4-11? Yes. The 4 one, one hon. 4 <laughs> Okay. First up is a video from Brittany Bird, who watches us on Fox 29 in Stickersville, New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> she needs a star solution for her R&B stage persona. Take a look. Hi, I'm Brittany, and I go by Adrian Black when I perform. So my style problem is this. I write and perform a lot of fun and sexy R&B music, and my style of like hoodies and jeans just doesn't reflect that. I want to be comfortable, but I want my style to also reflect the fun and sexy music. I want to feel like a woman when I'm on stage. Okay, Brittany, I gotta tell you, when I heard about you, I stalked you on Instagram, and girl, you are so talented. So congratulations on all you've done so far. I'm so proud of you there. Okay, I will also say, as an artist, it's important to kind of put yourself on the map, you know, have a signature style. So when I listened to your music, I picked up a lot of like Jill Scott and a little bit of Aaliyah, right? So I thought that your alter ego, Adrian Black, could channel some sort of a street style vibe, right? So I picked up a bustier top that has a little bit of a fun pattern that'll really stand out on stage. And then fringe shorts are so fun because when you're cradling that mic and you're moving, all the fringe is gonna dance with you. And then get some pops of jewelry because you really want to stand out on stage. Now I know you like to bust out in sneakers and stuff. But heels are really just gonna show the boys you mean business because you're singing out like love ballads and stuff like that. So you really want to look like the lady that you are and, and channel that power. So have fun with this look. I know you're gonna rock it. I love it, Jeannie. I love that. You like that one? I love it. it that is Those funky. shorts are so cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up, Ty Knight Zalewski wrote to us from Irvine, California, where she watches us on Fox 11. She writes, Hi, Jeannie, I'm 43 and recently retired as a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. I was a flight attendant for 18 years, so I wore a uniform every day to work. Here I am now enjoying my free time and being a busy mom, a busy, busy mom, now that I no longer get told exactly what to wear. I need some tips that can keep all of this full figureness intact while taking care of my eight-year-old and running after my two-year-old. I'm wow. retired and easy living, so I need some quick and easy tips to make sure I look good because now I have the time to look good. Yes. Go you. Yes. yes. Ty, you totally earned your miles by working so hard, so I want to make you look like the boss that's on vacation. So I want to give you a very resort chic wear, okay? So with that full-figured, gorgeous, bodacious body you got, go for tunics because it's got an easy flow to it and it lengthens you out. And everywhere you move, it just gives a very relaxed look to you. And then also eclectic pieces of jewelry like this make you look like the world traveler you are. Now I know that you've got a two-year-old, so pants are really easy to kind of stretch and run and keep up with her. And then, girl, you've got to hook it up with some heels because you never know if your man might take you back to the Mile High Club. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Too, because if you don't have so time cheap. to do your hair, that's easy. Throw a dope hat like that. Yeah, yes. you know, you and I love yeah. hats. Well, love Jeannie, it. we've got time for one more right here in our studio audience. Kimberly Moran, what's your question? Hi. Hi, Jeannie. I need your help. I'm a mother of three, and I recently okay. lost a lot of weight. I'm still young and I want to keep it spicy for my man. I was wondering if you could help me get rid of the leggings and tank tops. Well, first of all, congratulations on dropping weight. I know how hard that is, so good for you. You feel good, right? And then congratulations on being a mom of three. That's a lot of work. Thank you. Okay, so when I heard your story, I channeled my own mom. Mama Mai was a mom of three at a young age, and so she was obsessed 
with jumpsuits. I inherited so many jumpsuits off of her because it's like a one and done outfit. You don't have to think about anything. There's no buttons and zippers. You don't have to match with it anything. Also, if you drop off the kids at school or you're running around in the playground, it stays together, you know? And it shows a little bit of skin because you want to show what you're working with your man, right? And, okay, I'm going to say, jumpsuits are a little hard to get into because I'm going to try to help you out. You got three kids. You're done. This jumpsuit is staying on. You and your man are going out on dates. You're going to keep it that way, okay? Yes, thank you. So this is a fun, easy, relaxed outfit. And Kimberly, we want you to have a really fresh start with your wardrobe. So guess what? 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 We are going to give you this entire outfit. The oh and God. everything. The jacket, all of it. We love when girls are able to take a simple idea and turn it into a successful business. Yes. It's time for Girl Powered. <laughs> Everyone knows the saying, when life gives you lemons, Make, Make lemonade. lemonade! Well, what happens after that, right? Our next guest, Michaela, bottled and sold that lemonade, turning a sweet drink into a booming business with the mission to save the bees. Take a look. When Michaela was just four years old, bees stung her twice in one week. Though she was first scared, she soon became fascinated with them and all the important work they do. At the same time, she took a lemonade recipe from her great granny Helen and started sweetening the drink with local honey. As her lemonade grew in popularity, her passion for the bees grew as well. Our bigger mission is to educate families about learning how to save the bees. Saving the bees is something I have a passion for. It needs to be done. Bees are so important to our lives because they pollinate one out of every three bites of food we eat. They've been dying off in huge numbers and Michaela is working to save them. Now, at just 11 years old, Michaela's company, Me and the Bees Lemonade, has taken flight. She's in dozens of stores, she's met the president and the first lady, and she has the whole country buzzing about her sweet success. Give it up for Michaela. Just Michaela. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Mama. Thank you. Now, you've you. been running this business since she was four years old. Wow. That is amazing. Wow. Well, I can see you're already in Whole Foods. That's yes. crazy. Yes. Thank you. Gosh, congratulations. Now, we love what you're doing for the bees. Can you tell us why are bees so important? They pollinate one out of every three bites we eat. Mm -hmm. And then they also, um, without the bees, our food supply would collapse. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows how incredibly important they are. Mm -hmm. And that's why my mission is to make a measurable impact on saving them. Awesome. Right. This is amazing. It's a great mission. I, I actually had to get educated about bees because I didn't know much about this. So thank you for educating me on this. Yes. Now your company is called Me and the Bees Lemonade. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning behind your amazing name? Well, we decided to name it Bee Sweet Lemonade at first. Okay. And that was when I was four and a half years old and it was like a it was a hobby. But then as we grew, we realized that with the name Bee Sweet Lemonade, it would only let us do one product, which was mm -hmm. lemonade. But I wanted to expand. Well, Look at you. <laughs> Bye, honey. So smart. <laughs> So Girl, you smart. a little superstar, ain't you? She is. Let me do it. She sure is a superstar. <laughs> we met you recently at the yes, White House. Did. And I know you've been there a few times. She's been there a few times. And you travel all around the country. What do you enjoy most about that? I really enjoy meeting awesome people like you guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. so Have you ever um, helped other kids start businesses? Well, I've definitely inspired them to, and <laughs> they teach like high schools what I know. I'm like, yes, so today I'm gonna talk to you about the balance statement, the income statement, and the cash flow statement. Yes, baby. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, my liquor, you got it figured out, oh, girl. I've been yes. trying to tell my staff that all the time. <laughs> no one listens to me, no joking. <laughs> We love what you're doing to save the bees, girl. We know you have the Me and the Bees pack, and it's going to help spread the word. Congratulations. Yes, and it includes a Me and the Bees 
lemonade, lip balm, and a packet of seeds to grow your own bee-friendly flowers. And by planting them in your home, you can join in on Michaela's mission to help save the bees. It's not hard to channel every excuse in the book when it comes to skipping the gym. If I have to choose between sit-ups and sitting down in front of the TV, my couch will win every time. Well, what if I told you that you could get fit while watching your favorite shows, like The Real. It's time to tune in and get toned with some totally tubular workout tips. <laughs> Do you really have the desire to work out but find yourself sitting on the couch watching me on TV right now? Answer me, I just asked you a question. Huh? Who? <laughs> me? Yes! I'm talking to you. You want to get into shape, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. All right. Well, you tuned into the right infomercial. OK, so instead of watching commercials, use that time to actually work out. Just remember to consult your doctor before starting any new workout routine. Now, since there are approximately six commercial breaks in every hour-long show, Yes. Wow. There's bound to be a car and food commercial. Okay. So every time you see a car commercial, do 10 push-ups. And every time you see a fast food commercial, do a set of 10 sit-ups. What are you waiting for? Now? Get to working. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Wow. I can totally do these while I'm watching TV. Absolutely. Now, after each set of commercials, Add more to your original count. You should be up to at least 60 by the end 60. of the show. Yes, because it's an hour long. As you can see, it's all about multitasking. I cannot believe we are giving these tips out for free today. Girl, a fast food commercial is up next, so let me see you do some more sit-ups. Okay, here we go. Sit-ups. Ready? One, go, two, three. All right, you keep working out. I have more stuff to sell, so I've got to go, okay? Okay, I do. Okay. <laughs> this next tip will blow your minds at home. I'm talking about circuit training. Take your own workout equipment and set it up in front of your TV. Depending on how big your space is, you can literally create your own gym in your living room. Hey, you there watching me? I think your name is Adrian. What? Yes, I see you on The Real sometimes. Oh, hold up. You're a fan of The Real? Yes, hey, I am girl. a fan of the real. Watch it at home. I'm headed straight to you, girl. Woo! Oh, no. Oh, no. Go, 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 go. Now, I see you have all this workout equipment, yeah. but it's all in the wrong areas. That jump rope, those weights, bring them over here and set them in front of the TV, and you'll have a perfect view to catch all your shows while burning these calories for sure. You got it all set up? Yes. All right, now let's get to it. Oh. Lift up those weights. Oh, gosh. Yes. And bust it like that. Bust it, bust it, bust it all back. How you feeling, Adrian? I'm feeling the burn already. Well, it looks like it's my lunch break. You're doing a great job, <laughs> but I have to go. Stay tuned. <laughs> You're just tuning in, don't worry. We still are giving out great deals. Let's go to the next caller really quickly because we're almost out of time. Caller, you're on the line. Okay, so I've been tuning into the show and I took notes the whole time, but I have like a problem. I can't stop like fidgeting to actually try your tips. Well, let me come out and show you the ways. <laughs> Yes. Don't you worry, I'm okay. <laughs> you can burn 300 to 350 calories per day just by fidgeting. That would be 109,500 extra calories burned in a year, girl. That's an extra 31 pounds lost, all Whoa. right? More things you could try and stand instead of sit. Okay. Pace whenever possible. If you sit at a desk, force yourself up and out of your chair. All of these are better for your spinal health and metabolism. Wow, I guess I really knew that fidgeting is a good hobby of mine. Exactly.